Hello. Welcome to one more of our uh, Brave Free Travel question and answer videos, I guess. Um, we're gonna talk about why we choose to live in Mexico because we get a lot, a lot, a lot of this question and I think a lot of people think that Mexico is just like this really, really scary place but it's actually not scary at all and awesome. I talked about this in our other video um, but just living in Mexico is a unique experience that I think everyone should, you know, do. I mean, it's Mexico. There's so many, so much culture, the food, the views, the Pueblo Magico, there's so many little things that are not known, you know, to the rest of, you know, the world, really. So, like, we, we've we lived here before, we've traveled extensively through Mexico, and one of the reasons we wanted to come back was because, well, right now, as Americans, we're not really able to travel much, and we figured if we're not going to be able to go and travel a bunch, we at least want to be somewhere where we can explore and feel like we're learning about different cultures constantly and I think Baja is a great place for that. So one of the reasons that makes it really great uh, for us to be here in Baja is that California is a few hours away driving and so we're able to bring certain things that um, they're not necessarily available here and I mean aside from obviously going to visit family and whatnot we're able to you know there's some food items that are hard to find harder to find in a small city like Ensenada and we're able to find it there some things that will not ship here Mm -hmm. and we can sh you know ship it over there and bring it over there and bring it from over there um and then things like secondhand stuff so we're big thrift shoppers and for whatever reason the mexicans that live here go up to the united states and buy everything thrift shopping and sell it here super expensive so like one time we wanted to buy a desk and it was like what 40 50 dollars for it was more than that for like a like, used desk like a crappy like old... i remember it being a hundred dollars and i was like but we get this at Goodwill for like $10. Right. So like, you know, it's really convenient for us because we can just go to like a Goodwill or any kind of thrift stop store in the United States and, you know, get something and bring it here. Obviously, we're not talking about bringing mass amounts of things no. that you would have to declare and go to the border and all that stuff. But it just makes it easy for us to kind of like make our home comfortable and have everything we need. Like I can buy my dry color quinoa from, you know, <laughs> uh, Trader Joe's or something like that that might not be available here. Or if it is, it will be super expensive or hard to find. Yeah, of course there are some things here that we can't get over there, but that's where you have the best of both worlds and that's what we want. We want the best of both worlds and still be able to be close to family and still be able to, you know, if we want to say go to Big Bear uh, and go snowboarding, we can go snowboarding, you know, we just go to where we live in, you know, in California, stay there for a night, go snowboarding, come back and then come back all the way over here and it's not so right. far away. And within like 10 minutes we're in the ocean here in a nice beach and if the pacific is too cold we can drive two three hours and go to the sea of cortez where it's warm year round so it's literally like tropical waters and that's kind of neat as well yeah definitely uh, the bio systems that are going around here it's beautiful the sea of cortez is amazing and it like she said it's not that far away and you can make a whole trip out of that since you're already over here it's a beautiful another thing that's really convenient is that the drive from the border to here is like literally one straight highway and because there's so much tourism coming from california down into baja um we go through something called like Wota, which is a highway where you pay these tolls and so you're always insured if you get on an accident or anything happens on that uh, main highway it's also nice because a lot of the roads here in mexico are not always kept the best and this highway is kept very nicely there's n not a lot or almost no potholes so like you can drive it's a straight through dr drive you don't have to go through any kind of cities or anything like that so you don't even have to drive through Tijuana to get here so it makes it just like a straight shot straight from San Diego we just drive straight south and we're here in like an hour and a half on the border which is not bad and it's a beautiful drive yeah they call it the scenic route and literally you're on the coast it's like driving on the Pacific Coast Highway you just drive through the em everything you see, go through all the mountains and the beaches are just beautiful from there. So. And then on the side of the road, you have a bunch of restaurants that you can stop at and eat. But we're getting derailed from the main subject. <laughs> Another benefit of uh, moving uh, here, living here in Baja, is um, healthcare and dog care and all kinds of care. So just to give you an idea, my nails, they cost me in the United States like what, $50, $60 at least to get my money and petty. Over here, it's costing me, what, $30 at a really, really nice place where they do a really good job. You can get it for much less. Like, if I just want to do, like, change my nail polish um, to gel, it's going to cost me $10. And that's just awesome. Also, our dogs. Our dogs, uh, they need shots. They need teeth cleaning, all that stuff. We got that all that done by with only, like, $150, $200, which that would have cost 
Oh my gosh. So we spent $200 and they got um, their entire physical exam with blood work. They got an entire grooming with nail clipping and all that stuff. They got all their teeth done, the exam that goes with their teeth uh, to make sure that their uh, immune system can take up being put on there. And antibiotics to go with their, uh, you know, with their treatment so that when they go home, they can be taken care of to make sure they don't get any infection. And all of that for both dogs costed us $200. Some, uh, around there. Oh, oh, and they picked them up and dropped them off yes. at our hotel. So it was like full service, <laughs> full service. Yeah. Another thing, I also got my phone fixed over here. I just needed the camera repaired. And that cost me around $53, which it would have cost about $150. In the, Same in the thing space. for me. My phone uh, broke recently and it cost me $75 to get it fixed completely. And it was something in the circuit board and that would have cost at least $150 in the United States. Now these places are, aren't Apple certified, but I mean, it, it, I mean, they our phones are pretty doing. old anyway. Yeah. We don't care, but, you know. And they know what they're doing. So we, we decided, let's just do it. You know, let's uh, let's invest in, in, in our phones and, and fix them. <laughs> also, of course, there's always the benefit of like living here. You know, we, we earn in dollars and we're spending in pesos. So however you want to see it right now, the dollar, I think it's 22 pesos or 21 pesos to a dollar. So even though Baja is probably one of the most expensive Mexican places to be at, like it's not cheap compared to like a place like Oaxaca, for example, it's still relatively cheap especially if you compare it to living in california so this is not cheap like you know you cannot buy you know six tacos for 30 pesos or anything like that like you find in mexico city <laughs> everything here is pretty much american prices but um they're not as expensive and one benefit that comes from that is that we have a lot of american influence for certain things that makes it really cool for example microbreweries there's tons of microbreweries in baja we have a friend and she's brought us beer from a, some a local here and they make it here and it's a big thing. It's 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 definitely a culture that's come from the States, from California, a lot of microbreweries, and it's slowly coming this way, which is pretty awesome because they have the talent and it's it's they're wonderful. And that's a slowly anymore. Like honestly, you see so many microbreweries. We've been to like three or four at least. Yep. Um, but there's a lot more and it's a big, big culture down here. And of course, there's also the wine. Baja has the Valle de Guadalupe, which is really close here to Ensenada, and that's the fifth largest fastest growing um, wine uh, region in the world and it's absolutely gorgeous and you can have yourself a very nice you know wine country day or weekend or week for a fraction of the price that you would in California or Washington. Yeah and you'd be surprised there's I mean I think the best breakfast restaurant in the world is there. Oh yes. Um, we just found that out. La comida, la, la, la cazuela de Doña Estela. Something la like that. La cocina de Doña Estela. La cocina de Doña Estela. We've been there actually. There was a huge a line when we went but like we didn't know why. Ago. We were just No, like, oh, we, knew that, I, we knew that place was good, but they hadn't won best breakfast in yeah. the world yeah. yet. So now the lines must be like three days to get in or something. I don't know. So there's a, very, a lot of unique wineries there. And not just that, there's a lot of unique places to stay. Uh, and so you really can't go wrong with taking a tour down El Valle de Guadalupe. Uh, and uh, so that's just, just, that's just one of the things you can do. Another reason we like it here a lot is because we're really into conservation and eco-consciousness. And that's one of the reasons we love California so much because we feel there's a lot of, you know, initiatives and a lot of movement towards being more eco-conscious. And the same thing happens here in Baja. So a lot of Mexico is still not really on board with the whole eco-consciousness, but here in Baja, you, they don't even give you plastic bags in the grocery nope. store. And when they do, the ones that do, they're all biodegradable. Um, they've done this big project of collecting, let's say like old tires from the marina here, mm -hmm. from the port. And they made like the separations between the, the roads, like the main roads in the city. They've made marine mammal animal sculptures out of these old tires. Everything is recycled. There's a huge culture of container home building, tiny home living, um, upcycling old materials and old furniture to make new cool stuff. So it's a really, really progressive, you know, um, I, w I don't want to say California minded, but it really does feel like we're in an extended part of California. Yeah, there's a lot of solar panels everywhere too. Yes. Uh, that's definitely the culture that's that's growing here. Um, and just overall, it's the eco-consciousness of it all is definitely a very appealing and we definitely want to be a part of it. But it also has enough local charm to where you feel like you're somewhere else. So like you drive anywhere here and you're still very much in Mexico. There's tons of local flair, lots of local cuisine, Baja cuisine and Mexican cuisine, which are two different things, by the way. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk about that in another video. We'll probably do a little cuisine culinary uh, Baja tour at some yeah, point because yeah. the food here is amazing. Yeah. Um, but we love it here because you can drive down 10-15 minutes and you can be 
at the beach, on the port, in the middle of a city. There are clubs for those who like it. There's breweries. You can drive 30 minutes and you're in a Valle de Guadalupe. So you have this beautiful wine region. You can drive 30 minutes and you're on top of a mountain somewhere. Um, there is snow nearby in the mountains here. There's hiking. I mean, there's just everything. Yeah. And you can also, if you don't want to go anywhere, there's Uber Eats. You can get Uber Eats and you could basically get it from all the local places around here. So if you don't feel comfortable going that day anywhere, you could just stay home, relax, get some Uber Eats, and you have unique Ensenada cuisine here. And one of the things, one of the main reasons actually why we love it so much also is the internet. A lot of places have a lot of local flair, have horrible internet. And as you know, if you want to be a digital nomad or work online in any way, sort of shape, you need good internet. We have microfiber here. Microfiber? <laughs> no, no. Fiber, fiber optic. Cable. Where did I get microfiber? Fiber microfiber is the fabric, right? Yeah, it's microfiber. Anyway, <laughs> fiber optic internet. And there's all these cool startups happening here. Like there's this really cool company that um, kind of like started this whole microfiber internet. Uh -huh. <laughs> this fiber optic internet, they're not even related to the big, big, you know, players that have always been in Mexico. And they started giving um, fiber optic internet to really remote places like up in the mountains. and they're doing really well. Yeah, you can definitely get those services. And little by little, I think in the next 10 years, this area is all gonna be fiber optic. Um, there are still you know, some growth to be done, but that's with any growing city like Ensenada.